But heart rate training can be a good thing, and it can be a very, very smart technique to guide you in your intensity, you know, during training. So winter has finally arrived. So most runners gauge their workout intensity by pace. You know, the faster you run, the harder the workout. You know, like really seldom do people hear someone ask, you know, like what heart rate are you in? Like what heart rate zone are you in? You know, even if they're using like, you know, the latest watches like Koros or Garmin. But here's the thing. Heart rate data is more accessible than ever before, right? Runners you know, are tuning into those numbers like I was. And I'm kind of wondering how I can enhance my performance. But heart rate training can be a good thing. And it can be a very, very smart technique to guide you in your intensity, you know, during training. Depending on your goal and what you want to achieve, I, you know, I think heart rate training really helps, you know, make your easy runs easy, right? Much easier. And your hard workouts harder right? And so it ensures that you're actually working out at the correct intensity for your goal. And I think that's been the biggest thing for me. So what exactly is heart rate training? Um, you know, I've been training this way for last year and I would say heart rate training uses, you know, your, you know, your heart, right? It's measured in beats per minute, um, or it's a percentage of your maximum heart rate. And as a, as a guide for intensity, um, using that individual heart rate that you have, um, it can create specific training zones that help in determining your intensity for, you know, any given workout. Instead of training by pace, use your personalized um, zones and heart rate monitor, like, my, like your watch, right, uh, to ensure that your uh, you know, your cardio system is working at a specific effort for a set amount of time, okay? And mine range, right? Mine range from like an, uh, from an hour to, to three, right? So the, the idea behind heart rate training is to, you know, train your aerobic system without, without overstressing your skeletal and muscular systems, you know? And, a, and it does that by working out in each zone, Okay, so that way you're making sure that you're, you're not pushing yourself to the brink, right? You're not pushing yourself to the max. Uh, you're also being able to hold back from pushing too hard, which can you help, you know, without overtraining, without hurting yourself, getting injured. So how to find your zones. Your heart rate is one of the most accurate measurements of intensity and effort um, during a workout. I mean, you can use power, but I like this one. You know, everyone has a resting heart rate, which is best measured, think about this, best measured when you first wake up. And a maximum heart rate or the upper limit of, of what your ability is, okay, of your cardiovascular system, you know, can handle during physical activity, okay? So between these two values um, are different zones, right, that, um, that mark your effort, let's say. Um, and the most accurate method to find your maximum heart rate is done in a lab, okay? You get a lab test where they measure all that, and it, that's what gives you the best number, right? And, it's, you know, working with professionals, um, they have all the fancy equipment and stuff like that, or in a field test, which is, you know, can be supervised by, you know, somebody that's certified, right? Whether it's on a treadmill, gym, stuff like that, uh, indoor bike, Um but to find your zones kind of on your own, uh, the thing that you're going to want to do is be able to calculate your maximum heart rate. And so basically, you know, you've, you've probably, you've probably seen, you know, one of the, you know, the long lasting formulas of like, you know, 220 minus your age. Uh, but I've been reading a number of other articles and there's another one that works out, um, even better, right? And it's available for, 
you know, the general public, let's just say. So it's, it's a 208 minus, you know, 0 0.07 times your age, right? I got it's the formula right down below. And you can fill that in. And it works for most non-elite runners, right? So there's five zones that they you can pretty much follow based on what Polar has has put out there, okay? They've been doing this since like the 1970s, I believe. And there's five of them, right? So there's light, there's light, uh, light moderate, uh, hard, uh, very hard. Um, you know, so here's, here's, when you look at it, like this is how like the numbers stack up to everything, right? So zone one is very light, like 50% to 60% of your maximum heart rate. Zone two, like light is 60% to 70% of your heart rate. Zone three, you know, it's very moderate, you know, 70% to 80% um, of your maximum heart rate. Zone four, hard, like 80 to 90% of your maximum heart rate. And zone five, very hard, 90% to 100% of your maximum heart rate. I'm more of a simple kind of guy, and I kind of like things using kind of like three zones per se, because it's much easier to, to kind of navigate. Um, so I look at like aerobic training, right? That's, you know, math training that I've been doing. So 50 to 70% of your maximum heart rate, right? Uh, tempo and threshold runs are like 71 to 85% of your maximum heart rate. And intervals are 85% of your maximum heart rate. Um, now, how does this, how do you reap the benefits of heart rate training, right? First of all, now, because here's the thing, if you're new to running, you may, you may get discouraged and you may not stick with it. You could start just doing math and just walk because you, you're going to have to do that. But once you're comfortable with like running the, you know, the miles, right? Putting in each one of the workouts, um, you can look at those zones and you can set them up, right? So using heart rate, you know, to determine your tempo, your threshold, your intervals, things like that. But I really wouldn't worry so much about that until you've built up a base, right? Because you want to be able to improve your biomechanical systems and speed. And so, like, there's so many runners who, who basically tend to ignore intensity and just rack up training miles, right? Like, in the middle of the road, intensity, but, you know, like zone three, or you run too hard. No, I got, I got injured, right? Um, but then there's also things that can kind of hold you back in a race. So you want to be able to calculate all the intensities and adjust your pace to ensure that, you know, your, your heart rate kind of stays in that zone. So that's why I like Maffetone because it helps you stay in that zone, right? train in this aerobic zone, stay there. And then once you've done that and built up a base, then you can start using these tools to help you figure out all of those heart rate zones. Go with the three. It's easier, right? Go with those threes. And that way, then you can put out a proper plan and make it simple and, and, and kind of stay injury free. Cause that's what this is about. So zone one should be easy. You know, it's great intensity level for recovery days right? So it should feel like, you know, you could literally maintain your zone one intensity for hours. You know, zone two is meant for runs more of like 90 minutes. Um, and these are longer, slower efforts, right? It serves more of the aerobic conditioning for, you know, distance running. Okay. And, um, it's a zone that it really improves the body's ability to burn fat as energy. That's where I've been for this whole maffetone training. That's the zone I've been in just to lose weight, right? To get faster, you know? And, you know, it's kind of like, you know, you're training for a half marathon or a marathon. You should aim for like 80% of your maximum or 80% of your training should be in that zone. Zone three is, you know, where you get some amazing results, right? Cardiovascular benefits, huge. Um, and it's when you start adding in, um, uh, in intensity. So aerobic zone, uh, you're still in that, but you're developing stamina that increases the aerobic capacity. Um, zone three is also like, it's like a sweet spot for tempo runs, uh, which are still predominantly um, aerobic in zone three. And it generally lasts for like 30 to 40 minutes. Um, and zone four is more of an anaerobic um, area. And that's where you're doing like your threshold runs to help your body. It gets 
better at burning carbs kind of at that higher end. Um, but it's also goes through the lactate acid, um, and it helps kind of boost your performance, uh, when you're training. Cause when you're going through the, the lactic threshold training, um, it's really hard, right? And like you're pushing really hard and that's where zone five comes in. That's like high, high intensity, right? And that's like, you're lasting for like uh, five minutes, right? It's, I mean, they shouldn't be able to like continue longer, right? It's, it is like full on sprint out, go as fast, fast as you can. And this is where I was doing like 400, it's an 800 meter repeats. Uh, and it really does help improve. So training should be in all of the zones um, in order to maximize your performance, uh, intensity, th and the zones are going to depend on your health and performance on race goals and, and your workout preferences, right? Like I would, in, in, in real summary, I would say focus on the base building of your aerobic zone, run math, right? 180 minus your age. Uh, I've said this lots of times before formula is right here on your screen. But I really wouldn't incorporate any speed work until you've really built up a base, especially if you're just starting out. Uh, if you're coming back from injury, again, same thing. Look, I'm not a coach. I'm not. I'm a real estate agent. I'm just getting healthy, getting fit, trying to motivate you guys and and everyone else out in the world just to kind of be a uh, you know a better, stronger runner uh, and stay in the sport. Maybe run your way into the retirement home one day and just just I don't know, be a happier runner right? So you can link to a number of the videos here and another video here that can help with those um, and get you set up to uh, train using the Maffetone method. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video today, guys, and uh, we'll be back with another episode next Sunday. See you guys. Bye for now. Together.